Good afternoon, it's Charlie again. Um, just want to do a, uh, a quick update on how the radio is going as I wait for some components to arrive, um, basically the, the BS-170s. Um, I had been having a bit of a think about um, how I want to feed RF into the power amplifier. Um, I'm definitely going to go with a suggestion of a Class E amplifier. Um, having done some more reading on that and looking at some of the material online, um, that seems to be a really good choice for a, a CW transmitter. You may recall when I was initially thinking about this, I was going to feed uh, clock 1 from the SI5351 through the PTT switch and then into the power amplifier. Um, I've changed that now. I'm going to run with a, a similar process uh, that Hans Summers uses um, in the QRP Labs radio. So um, essentially feed a continuous continuous RF into the classy amplifier um, and then modulate the, the VCC coming in to that amplifier and giving it some um, some waveform shaping uh, to get around key clicks. So uh, and that's what's depicted over here. So a bit of a change now in, in the thinking this PTT switch has been wired up to provide, uh, firstly, an earth to the microprocessor. If I just turn this off, we'll see it. Turn this on, we'll see it in parallel. So we'll just turn that on. Um, so now, and if you just look closely at that red uh, LED up there, you'll just see it sort of time on for a period of time and then key back off again. So what's happening there is the PTT, well, not the PTT, yeah, the, um, the key, is providing an earth to the microcontroller which is then outputting, there's a little transistor under here, a 2N2222, it's outputting a logic level 1 or 5 volts through a 1K ohm resistor um, to limit the, the current through the transistor, which is then earthing that relay. So I've gone away from the idea of having a manual PTT switch uh, or transmit receive switch that I have used in the past and decided, decided to go for a, a QSK type arrangement where it automatically toggles to transmit when you um, start to key. So that earth goes into the micro comp um, microcontroller. A timer starts. At the moment, it's set for one second. That it keys that um, relay. The relay then toggles across to transmit. The aerial is then switched from receive, which is that orange one there through the bandpass filter, to transmit which will be the output of the, of the transmitter in due course and also switching on the second pole um, the 12 volts coming in between the receive circuitry and the transmit. So um, so that timer, so once you sort of finish playing around transmitting, a second later it will toggle back to receive. At the same time it's also in software turning on and off that clock one output from the SI5351. So we just sort of just come back a bit up there. We can see up on the scope the output of um, that SI5351. So as we start to key away, we can see it's outputting that that nice continuous um, square wave, which will be pumping into our class three amplifier and then stop keying and it uh, returns back to zero. Now also of interest too, if we just zoom up on that, um, I'm on a 1 volt per division scale, so we just start transmitting and keep keying. We've got roughly there 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5 volts peak to peak, which is interesting because um, Hans and his radio, um, his SI 5351 was only outputting 3.3 volts, so he had to put his uh, output through a digital circuit using some NAND gates to essentially convert that 3.3 volts up to 5 volts. Um, I seem to be getting uh, into a, a high impedance load, of which the MOSFETs will be exactly the same, uh, 5 volts. So I'm going to attempt to drive those directly from the SI5351. Um, and if it works, great. If it doesn't, then um, in other words, I'm not slamming those MOSFETs on hard enough for the Class E amp. Then I'll do the same thing. I'll look to um, send this output through uh, a digital circuit to clean that up. Now the other thing too, which I am going to uh, employ uh, again, um, is a bit of a steer from from Hans's uh, paper. Is a circuit that he got from Dov, Don Huff, uh, W6JL. It's an integration circuit there that 
uh, provides a bit of shaping of what will be the transmit um, VCC or the VCC for the transmitter to give it roughly with the uh, 470 ohm resistor and the one microfarad capacitor that one there is just for um, limiting the current through the transistor um, it gives around 5 milliseconds so we've got a 5 millisecond rise time and then a 5 millisecond decay time um, to give some key shaping so that's that's the current thinking so keying away uh, nice and short um, that will modulate the uh, when I say modulate you know key shape the VCC running to the transmitter and then on the other side we'll have that continuous output from clock one at the desired transmit frequency uh, being fed into the classy amplifier so that's where I'm looking at going um, and uh, we'll see how that goes the only other thing I've added on the radio here is just um, a couple of connectors at the back uh, one for the antenna and then one for the uh, the 12 volts coming in from the battery pack so uh, that's where we're going with that now the class E amplifier um, seems to be like a, a really good bet to use for this, it seems to be a very high efficiency um, amplifier and I'm going to apologise here for filming the screen directly, there'll be some artefacts rolling through but it's just going to be the easiest way for this. Um, from what I can gather, this Nathan Sokal um, did some good research into this some time ago and produced um, quite a large paper here uh, as well as um, some papers he got published in I think um, QEX or one of those amateur radio um, magazines on page 9 and what I should do, I should just, should, should just jump across to the class amplifier here um, that's essentially what we're looking at there, so I'll be using a MOSFET here um, a BS170 being slammed hard on and off through the gate um, and then the output um, sort of resonance circuit here to to get that sort of high voltages which is sort of characteristic of the class e amplifier this particular anyway so, so, so sorry for bouncing around here a bit this website here um, was designed by VK1SV for this ANU EDU in Australia one of the universities um, the paper I've got from from um, from Nathan here for whatever reason doesn't have um, the the, the, the circuit diagram. So he talks about the various values you're trying to determine, the values of R, C1 and C2 and L2 and the like, but there's no pictures, so that's the reason why I sort of jumped across to this one, because this particular website here references that paper and essentially automates through this um, this input area down here um, the the formulas so what I want to do um, is I want to go through and hand calculate the values for this particular class um, E amplifier and then compare those results against some of the online tools this is one here obviously and the other one I want to use is um, this bit of software here from um, James Tun uh, it's, it's, it's free to download um, and it's obviously for designing classy amplifiers. If we just start it, we'll see that familiar um, amplifier again, as we saw before. Now, this one here I really like because it has an LT spice output. So once you've sort of put in some parameters and you start to get um, the values for the various components, you can then export that to an LT spice file and then with an LT size suck it in and then you can do your analysis and, and plots and the like. So um, I particularly like that because I use LD Spice quite a bit. So um, again, my thinking is, and what I'd like to do, because it's just what I, I think is just to um, is just to do a little bit of playing around with hand calculations and then comparing that with the likes of this sort of software here uh, and the like. So um, that's the approach I'm going to take. Um, so over the next few days, we'll start to um, start to sort of on paper work out what the various values are and uh, hopefully when those BS1, um, uh, BS170s BS turn up we'll be able to get into it. Uh, I'm, I'm going to take the same approach that Hans took um, with those little devices. Is um, I think they're rated for around 500 milliamps each is have three or four of them in parallel. Um, 
with, with one single resonance circuit or this arrangement here on the output and we'll see how we get on uh, the beauty, what, what one of the things going to work quite well for this radio is is really just a handful of components to make what appears to be a very efficient uh, up in sort of the 80% plus um, amplifier, um, amplifier and I think that will go really well because um, uh, size wise I don't have a huge amount of room to play with so I think that little amplifier um, will work quite well on there so anyway that's just a um, like I say just a, a, a quick update on on where we're going and sort of like the current thinking and um, I really hope those uh, MOSFETs turn out shortly so I can uh, sort of start um, playing around with that classy amplifier and uh, like I say see how the theory and the actual physical radio say again the physical configuration uh, compares anyway I'll say 73's and um, I will keep you posted and we'll go from there cheers all